Hi, this is Josh from Greasy Billows and today I'm going to have my first ever tutorial for a song. I've had tutorials before but I've never put out a tutorial for a particular song. This is an arrangement that I made from the very popular theme for James Bond. Before we get into the tutorial, let me show you how it sounds like. sounds much better on a digital accordion but I also like to play it on an acoustic accordion and I uh, I also feel that this uh, song in particular is actually a uh, a great workout in uh, two hand synchronization and also keeping bass melodies going and then the rhythm going and then changing chords all of that I always look at the accordion as three different voices at the same time so it lets you play three different tracks independently, which is number one, the bass. So that, that's a melody in itself in which you could have bass lines and then we have chords. So these chords could be used for harmonization, just like the way that you use the basses for, but they are tonally separated a lot. So the basses are like very like the bass end of a piano not, not as much maybe an octave higher than that uh, and the chords are actually a little bit higher so it gives you uh, a, it makes your song rich by just using two fingers right and we usually restrict ourselves by playing like bass chord patterns and don't really do a lot of bass melodies uh, sometimes we might add like alternating basses We might do like bass fillers like something like that. But uh, doing a bass melody and having that independent theme using the Stradella basses would put this instrument uh, instrument's capability. But by playing a bass line, a distinctive melody that you can hear using the Stradella basses definitely makes... <sighs> but by playing a bass line that is melodic and recognizable is something that puts this instrument... <sighs> Uh, 
by playing a bass melody that is recognizable like 18, it makes use of uh, that three voice component of it uh, more than like your standard rhythms that you play on the instrument. And uh, so for, for, for this, we are basically playing the main theme uh, for James Bond that goes off like So we are doing that with the bass. And we are doing that while also playing the right chords uh, for whatever phrases that we are playing. So it's basically A, A sharp or B flat, and then B natural. So it's, it's this chromatic that keeps happening. So in order to do that, we can find uh, the A right here and then we can play the B flat so that's a little bit harder right why find the A here so we can also find the A in the counter bass section right here so you find your C bass right here and right below it towards the floor is your F bass and right on top of that in the counter bass row is your A bass button. So it's A. And then the B flat is located right below the F bass. So this is your F bass, B flat bass. So we find the A right here. B flat. And then B natural is the counter bass of G. That's what we're doing. But when I play, I play it a little bit differently because that's how I learned to play this song uh, in the beginning. So I've stuck to it that way, but you don't have to do it uh, at all. You could play the A, B flat, B natural, B flat uh, melody. But the way I play it, I actually play a D. <laughs> reason I find it uh, more interesting or maybe it was easier for me to play it because the first chord was actually a D minor so if you look at the the bass pattern this is something that just keeps going on and on until the end of the song I don't know how it goes in the original song but I have uh, uh, arranged it this way and it sounds okay so uh, feel free to like uh, change the chords to whatever they are in different sections of the song, but I think the entire song, uh, the different variations are parts that I play on the right hand harmonize pretty well with this theme, given that this is the theme of the song and everything is built uh, on top of it. That's not all of it. We got to add the chords, right? So, and uh, I told you that I substitute the A bass with the D bass and uh, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to show you what I do. So the first chord when I play the D bass, or where you are supposed to play the A bass, is actually a D minor. So it's. So I use fingers two and three for this. And then the next bass is B flat, right? So if I'm using this, how do I find B flat? So if I line up my fingers right next to each other, after the D. So D with my third finger, my fourth finger goes on G, and my fifth finger goes on C. I need to find B flat, which is two more buttons this way, right? So from C, I go to F and then B flat. So that's how I find it. Play my D, D minor, and then I go two more, and then there's B flat right there. And now I have to play B flat major, and I'm gonna use my fourth finger for that. It's just this. One more time. D, D minor, B flat, B flat major. But if you were to play uh, the song uh, with the right bass note to start with, which is A, A right next to the D bass. So 
but but I'm still gonna uh, stick with my D bass right here. We just looked at the first two chords, which is D, D minor, B flat, B flat major. So with fingers two and three, and then fingers five and four. And now the next chord is a G major, but with a B bass. So the G major, you know where to find it. So you you can feel your C bass button right here. So you can just move to the next row and you'll get the G major chord and the B bass is located on the counter bass on top of the G bass. So from B flat to B flat major, my fingers four and five. I now use my third finger to reach out to the B counter bass in the G row and then G major. Next chord is a G minor and I still have my B flat on my pinky. I'm going to play that again. The finger 5 and the finger 2 which was on G major now slides down to G minor. So that's the entirety of it. So I'm going to go over it one more time with the finger numbers. So we start with D bass minor with fingers 2 and 3 and then B flat bass with finger 5 B flat major with finger 4 and B natural on the counter bass row with finger 3 and G major with finger 2 and play the B flat counter B flat bass using finger 5 again and finger 2 plays G minor I'm gonna play this as a very slowly repeated loop and you can use this as a practice play along until you get your fingers right and I'll also uh, cut and edit this section of the slow backing track or the slow play along practice track and upload it as a new video and I'll put a link down at the description and I'll also make sure that something uh, a card pops up in the video at this timestamp so that you could go there and keep practicing until you get this section right. Let's start again. <laughs> So at tempo, it sounds something like this. And obviously, we're not going to play the chords uh, in their full duration. We are going to play them as staccato. So I'm holding down the basses, and the chords are staccato. choose a bass register that's a little weaker so that you don't drown out the sound of uh, the right hand. You could even do something like this. Okay, so now that we, we are here, I'm not going to focus on uh, the introductory part of it. I'm going to focus on the main phrases of this song. And then uh, the introductory part of it, the chords that we play there, we could just uh, uh, fill it up towards the end. 
So the, the, the first section that we are going to focus on is the one that is originally played in guitar, which uh, goes like this. <laughs> is what goes on and uh, we'll learn this part separately with the right hand get it right and then uh, tie it together with the left hand it's supposed to sound like this together so the left hand does the exact same thing that you just learned uh, in the previous section uh, as it will until the end of the song and uh, <clears throat> the right hand the, the the melody the notes in the melody are actually pretty straightforward but it's the timing that's a little bit tricky so the notes are basically just this so it's D E and F but we played like this repetitive notes and we should be using different fingers for uh, the repetitive notes and not play them with the same finger we're not gonna play it like this so if you do it like that uh, you'll only be able to speed it up a little bit and if you're going at like a faster tempo you won't be like you, you, you won't really be able to catch up with it. So uh, this will actually be a neat finger drill that you can use for repetitive notes. So what, uh, watch my fingers here. So I'm gonna do. exact same fingering but you should uh, grab the idea that uh, we are not using the same finger over and over again on the repeated notes so if you watch closely this is the tricky note right so I have to play it like four times and uh, I'm not gonna use the same finger I could do this but I'm not gonna do that so what I'm gonna do is use my finger three so I play the first note which is the D and then we have to play the E four times right so when I play the D I use my thumb and then for the E I use my third finger for the first time and then the second finger the second time and then the first finger the third time and then I use my third finger for the fourth time. I think, at least that's what I think I do. <laughs> I don't exactly remember what I do, but let me see. Yeah, that's what I do. So I, I do this. So one more time. And uh, this allows you to speed up and also play it correctly. So it'll, it'll be like. That's what this enables, and it, uh, it's, 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 it's so much fun. And uh, let, let's look at the notes uh, uh, together. So it's, it's D, so it's D and a bunch of E's repeated. And uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a lot of syncopation all throughout the song. So what is syncopation? Syncopation is when uh, you're like starting out your melody between two beats, so you're not no longer staying with the beats one, two, three, four, uh, not at the beginning of the beat, but your melody stretches out into the middle of a beat between two beats, or sometimes it even starts between two beats. And that, that's what makes the tune a little bit more funkier. And uh, so let's see what we're doing here, right? And then for, and then we play the, we play three Ds after that. 
I don't really care what fingering you use for that because those are a little slower than so I, I, I usually just do and then uh, I have my second finger so I, I just use second first and second again so you, you could just think about it as like running over the keys uh, by swapping different keys and we are uh, swapping different fingers and hitting the same key so it, it just goes like D, E, D. So we do D, all of those are E's, and then three D's. And then we hit the D again, and we play the exact same pattern on the F. And then we play two E's, and then we play the D, D again. So I'm gonna uh, play it really, really slow. down the sheet music for this but since I played this by ear uh, and I never wrote it down I don't have it with me right now apologies for this and uh, if I do uh, end up writing that I will uh, include the link to the sheet music in the description but until then bear with me with just this video tutorial so the entire thing is like this I'm gonna do it really really slow right hand only together and this happens and then I have a small phrase in which we just play the main theme on the right hand so the main bass line so we're gonna double that up with the bass side. And then we jump right off to the most recognizable part of the song, which is this. the entire 
starting and ended differently. So it goes with D, F, D flat, C, F, A flat, A, F, E, but instead of going to D this time, we're going to go to D flat. of doing D and B, we're doing D flat and D. So the entire thing, one more time. Yes. section which is this closer so I'll play them really really slow with both hands jazzy chord. I use this chord in both the James Bond theme and the Pink Panther. And uh, so in the Pink Panther, uh, I play the same thing with the E minor where I do. That's how I end the song. I picked it up from that arrangement from a Hal Leonard book, but uh, I've been using that in similar songs uh, a lot. And so this is a great chord. So uh, I actually don't know the name of the chord. I have to like uh, look it up. What it is, I'm going to play it an octave lower so that it's better for you to see. So on the left hand, we're still doing like D bass and D minor. And uh, I'm playing the A major chord with my fingers 2, 3, and 5. A, C sharp, and E. And I'm adding the F natural with my thumb. And I'm playing D and D minor in my left hand. So the, the notes are actually F, A, C sharp, E, and it sounds very mysterious and uh, fits right in with the spy theme. And I add the D minor on the left hand which uh, adds this D extra note which we have uh, not played so far. So it's basically and it, it's so interesting that this sounds Good because if you look at the top end of this, I'm playing C sharp and E, and I'm also adding the D on the bass and the F natural on uh, as part of the D minor chord. So this is a lot of seconds bunched up together, which is which doesn't sound good at all. But with the way that we voiced it, they're not overlapping so much that it doesn't really. Uh, bother you so much. They are spaced out in different octaves. So uh, if you actually look at this, this is what we are playing. And uh, you, you 
you could uh, pick that rhythm up but this chord is super interesting and if you look at it let, let, let's see what this uh, what the name of this chord might be uh, it's a so we're playing D F A so that's a D minor and then we are playing the seventh D minor sharp seven add ninth maybe that's the name uh, I would guess it has but maybe if there are other jazz experts that are watching this right now you can give me the correct name for that chord and uh, that, that's how it goes and uh, and after that, we have other parts uh, of the song, uh, which is basically the introduction, which goes off like. So, which is basically a, a very similar idea. We're doing like the D minor chord, and then we are adding the sixth, and then the octave, and then the ninth. So, it's basically D. I, I play the D in the bass over here. So D, F, A, B natural, and then D. And then I add the, the minor third, again, an octave separated. And then we start off with. section right there is the main theme that you played uh, which you learned from a later section of the song but that's how the introduction starts and that's why I didn't really start off with the tutorial for the introduction I wanted to go over the main components and then uh, this chord which we played at the ending of another section this nice jazzy chord that I showed you so that shows up as part of the introduction as well so we're gonna reuse that And then we just play the theme one more time. Just the left hand. And then we go off with this section that we uh, learned at the beginning with those re repeated notes. line with your right hand and then the main theme octave I like to glissando which adds like this nice dramatic effect so that's that same chord again which was the uh, minor sharp seventh add ninth we finish with that and then the ending is this which you could just pick up by ear which is so D, F, D flat, C, and then we do, and then do we do F, A, E, E flat, and along with all of that, we just play the D and D minor all the time, and then we do A, D, and then A, A flat. So 
approach goes like this. And we finish with the, that, that same chord, the jazzy sharp 7th add ninth on the D minor. That is it. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions in learning this song. Uh, this is one song that I enjoy playing because I just made up the arrangement and I didn't learn it from anywhere. Uh, so not, might not be very accurate with respect to the uh, actual theme, but it's so much fun to play and it's actually a very good exercise for two-hand synchronization, syncopation, and also playing bass melodies using different fingerings on your uh, left hand. You're not no longer going with two threes or four threes or whatever your standard method is, but we are using all four fingers and we are using them a lot. So uh, let me know uh, how your learning goes. I will be super excited to see any of your videos trying out this arrangement. And if you have a digital accordion, you can definitely use your uh, uh, orchestral sounds to make it uh, sound very different and uh, uh, thank you very much for viewing my tutorial and I hope you found this useful and I'll see you again with a different video until then it's goodbye from Josh